Yes, I mean, if we can invite the filmmakers present from Heal America and Not Anymore, Story of Revolution, please join, uh, join us on stage for a Q&A uh, and a discussion with the audience. Matthew Van Dyke. Well, and Matthew, I believe that this film today is playing in five festivals around the world, and you're here. Yeah. So you can imagine we're extremely grateful to be able to participate in this conversation with the filmmakers. Um, tell us what has been your experience with this film. Um, it's won many awards at different festivals. And are you here? Is this your first LA screening? Uh, no, it's not my first time. First one I've been to, though, okay. in LA. Uh, my experience with the film, uh, it's, you know, it's been over a year, the process of, of, from when I first set out trying to unsuccessfully raise funds to make the film, to make it a film to now. Um, you know, it was dangerous for Noor and I and, and everyone involved, uh, but it's been rewarding and, and I hope that it is seen around the world and it makes a difference. That's why I made it. That's right. Well, we're so glad you're here. We'd love to open it up to the audience for questions. Um, I'll repeat the question for the entire room to hear, but if anyone has a question, feel free to, to jump in. Any questions? Yes, in the blue t-shirt. Yes. Um, okay, I'm glad I came and saw the documentary, but I have a question. How can you make a documentary without showing uh, the beheadings and the massacres, barbaric massacres of the rebels, the Islamists, how can you, isn't, don't you think it's biased just to show one side of the story? And did did why, everyone hear the question? Why you don't show the other side? Uh, the, the question was uh, about showing sides, different sides of, uh, of this, you know, different sides, different people's stories and how can you show one side and not the other side? Is that correct? Yes. yes. And it was directed to Matthew. Yes, Matthew. It's a 15 minute film. Uh, for one thing, uh, there's a lot more that could have been shown about this side of the revolution. Um, you know, it, it's a openly, you know, everybody knows where I stand. I fought in a revolution in Libya. I openly support the Syrian revolution. Uh, this is a story that uh, you know, I, I think the media has done a good job or a horrible job, depending on your perspective, of talking about less savory elements of the revolution. But a lot of people haven't seen this side of it. Uh, so that's what I wanted to show, because this is what the majority, the heart of the revolution, what you saw in the film is who they are. Yes. Yes. Uh, Matthew, you went to Syria, and you were on the ground seeing reality. So are you scared for the future of Syria? as a, an American citizen who knows what's freedom and what's, what, because we're scared about our social security. So are you scared about the Syrian people? Or you think Syria is going with the revolution, going to the right path? Like how we live in America, they have the right to live like us. And right. with, with Assad, nobody can live the, the way we live. So do you think you're scared about Syria or you see their girls are doing the right things? and they are protecting their country looking for a better future. Thank you. Well, the Free Syrian Army, for the most part, is doing the right thing. Um, you know, I, I'd be very hopeful for Syria if the revolution is going to succeed. At this point, it looks like they'll be too serious, to be perfectly honest about it. Um, you know, I, I fear for the future of Syria. Um, I hope that at least part of Syria will remain free and can survive, but some drastic changes have to happen in this revolution for all of Syria to become a free country. Yes. Um, my question is, in 2012, German intelligence had talked about the Free Syrian Army and how a large number of the fighters are from foreign countries, including Al-Qaeda, members from Al-Qaeda and other terrorist organizations. What are your observations and what are your feelings about having non-Syrian fighters on the ground in Syria um, and a lot of these atrocities that people are concerned about 
are apparently from these individuals. What are your feelings about the uh, Al Qaeda infiltrating the Syrian free, free Syrian army? Well, there are Al Qaeda in the Free Syrian Army. The, the Syrian rebel movement is comprised of the Free Syrian Army and a lot of other groups. And those are the other groups. And actually, the Free Syrian Army has been fighting against Al Qaeda recently in Syria. <laughs> The Free Syrian Army, as far as I know, doesn't really accept many foreign recruits. A few units tried to recruit me when I was making the film, but that's because I fought in Libya. Uh, as a foreign fighter myself in Libya, and, and I, I don't have any problem with foreign fighters. Um, if somebody believes in their heart to go and help people on the other side of the world, that's fine. Um, and I don't even really care about their motivation. I care about after the war, that they move on to the next war, or if they do stay, deal with what the people in that country want. Um, but as long as they shoot in the right direction, Assad's forces, I don't really care at this point. And the revolution doesn't need to be fighting elements in the revolution when we're already losing against Assad's forces. How many hours of footage did you have in total shooting before you narrowed it down to the final 15 minutes and is it 50? It's an hour, it's, it's an hour now. Probably of, of Nora Malia, maybe uh, 10 hours, but I was in Syria a month. I shot so many interviews, maybe hours to hours of footage. 10 hours of footage? Maybe even more if you include the other interviews and B roll and stuff, yeah. Okay. I was, I was going to expect you were going to say hundreds. <laughs> no, yeah, so I really was. Total might have been 50. Okay. But for those two characters and, and that selection, maybe 10. Okay. And by the way, how did you focus on just those two characters? I did many, many interviews with FSA and civilians, and they just stuck out. You know, it's, I realized I had two stars, and I needed their voices to be heard. I think we've, we've heard, we, we're going to, yeah, we're going to just mix it up. Yes, the lady standing up at the black with the belt. Um, hi, Matthew. My name is Kune. I spoke to you yesterday. Um, I just got back from Syria six days ago. I've spent over two and a half months divided in three trips inside. I'm a humanitarian. And my question for you is, um, it's a personal question. I'm not sure how much time you spent with the people, the children that are suffering. I spent a great deal of time with them. I'm wondering uh, what message you can give to the citizens of this country and how we could support the psychological damage that's taking a toll on the adults, the, the men, the women, especially the children and the malnutrition in your, in your perspective and what you saw in your time there. Is that question that to be repeated? Everyone heard it? Mostly what I would say to Americans is imagine if you were in that situation. Um, if your government was doing the things to you that the outside regime has been doing to people there for decades. Um, you know, and if your city was destroyed and you saw this happening to your neighbors, what you would do, and, and then put yourself in their shoes and do it, and help. Um, Syrians are not that different than us, as you could hopefully see, see in the film. You know, Mallory wants to go to Las Vegas someday. Nor, likes, Nor and I used to listen to rock music all the time. Like, she, she learned English from MTV. They're not that different than us. Um, so that's what I think Americans need to focus on when they start addressing issues of of the humanitarian crisis, especially. Uh, Matt, Matthew, um, I believe this was your first documentary? That was my first released film, yeah. I filmed for years in the region, but uh -huh. it was uh, mostly motorcycle adventure. And what are, your, what, are your, what are your hopes and plans for the film continuing the festival circuit? Yeah, it's been accepted to over 75 festivals right now. Um, Really, it, I release it on YouTube, yes. trying to get it to go viral, uh, trying to change hearts and minds around the world so that next time, if there's a vote coming up in Congress, they don't get flooded with calls saying don't help those people over there, which is what happened this time. Uh, that's largely a failure of, of activism on our side. We lost that one, and hopefully next time we don't lose it. But it's going to take a lot of help. You know, I put the film out there. I need people to work hard to distribute it online, just tweeting, Facebook, everything to get out there. Did you know, what I feel for what's going on in Syria, it's a horrible thing that's going on through the whole Middle East, particularly in the last couple of years. Um, 
But to come here to the United States and expect the United States to resolve and help people in Syria before they help people here in the United States is very hypocritical. It's immoral um, to, for the United States to do that. Until America heals itself of the slave race wound, which has led to so much poverty and homelessness and disparity in this country, it has no business in Syria. And anyone who's in this country who wants to be an American citizen needs to understand that first, whether you're from Armenia, Syria, Israel. If you're going to be a citizen of the United States, you don't come here seeking something from us to help those over there unless you understand what's going on here. Because it's critical. How can the United States, and if you're a U.S. citizen that makes you one with us, how can you tell Syria and Assad and Ahmed Benadinejad and, and whoever else over there how to treat their citizens? when you are treating your own citizens, when you're treating the you citizens of chapter slaves in this country. Well, my, my, my response to that, I mean, for families, for families who are here, for families who are here, for, for, uh, for people who are Even trying to use their voice to here to be able to bring attention to them, and if America doesn't... I agree, and, and I extend my hand to you. Let's work together. Let become sensitized to the immorality what's going on here. Let's heal America first. As we heal America first, then we will get respect from other people around the world. We have no respect anymore if we ever did that. The only reason why people respect America is because of money and our military might. Uh, for Matthew, uh, so Matthew, you fought in the Libyan Civil War and uh, you were a freedom fighting and as we all know right now, it was in the news that right now the Libya has become the headquarters of Al Qaeda, and all this here, there is no central government, and there are all different kinds of militias fighting that. How come you're not supporting the Libyans to free them from Al Qaeda right now? And also, right now, there are in Syria, it's very widely reported by all new Libyans that over 100,000 foreign fighters are in Syria, and they are going there for Muslim jihad. They own a holy war, and they think that this is a holy war in Syria. And they are beheading citizens, beheading Christians. There are people in What is your country. question? Just please, what is your question, please? Support, why is he not against Al Qaeda? And how can he support beheadings of Christians and people and everybody else? And people are living in fear. There was, there was no death, no uh, bloodshed before. And uh, how can we support all this? Uh, okay. Okay. Thank and uh, you. how come, uh, what's your statement regarding the presence of, the, uh, uh, strong presence of Al-Qaeda in Libya right now? And how can you not doing anything about that? Are you supporting them? And, uh, you know, really, really, one, one question. Thank no, you. It's the same answer. Of course. Repeating the same um, sentence. Look, I, I don't like Al-Qaeda, and like, Everybody else, I don't, I don't want Al Qaeda in Syria. I don't want Al Qaeda in Libya. But you know, and first of all, your statement about Libya is is misleading. I've been to Libya twice since the war is over. The, the the government's corrupt and dysfunctional, like most governments in the region. But life is not you know like a Wild West movie. You can go there and spend weeks there, and it will not touch your life at all. Um, that said, look, there's Al-Qaeda in Syria. None of us wanted Al-Qaeda there, but Al-Qaeda's there. And that said, like I said, as long as they shoot at Assad, it's the reality of the situation, fine. You know, we don't want them there, but nobody else is helping. America's not helping, nobody's helping, and there's not enough men to defeat Assad. Of course it's not okay to behead priests. It's not okay to behead anybody. Except the problem is, the problem is that people protest it. Is it okay to kill children? Al Qaeda is our enemy, and Al Qaeda is the enemy of the FSA. However, Syria is a sinking ship, and if you have a ship full of women and children, are you going to stand there and let the ship sink? Because there's a few Al Qaeda on board. Because that's what's going on. Well, your and Mali's lives away, and everybody else who stands with them, 
because you don't like some of the people who were standing next to them shooting at Asa. You know, people protested against this film winning a humanitarian award because they supported the Assad regime, the people who protested. The fact is, this film features FSA. An FSA that only people standing between Armenians and Syria and the Al-Qaeda that you fear. Because if the FSA isn't supported and the FSA gets wiped out, all you're going to have there are Al-Qaeda. And they're not leaving the north of Syria. And Assad is not going to ever regain full control of Syria. So if you want to protect Armenians, you should be celebrating this film, not protesting. You know, we're going to really try to get a couple more questions in because we do have an 8, uh, 8 p.m. program in this theater. With all, due, with all due respect, ladies and gentlemen, we have to stay on schedule. I know, Matthew, if you wanted, did, did you address what you wanted to say? You just said you wanted to speak. I, I got pushed a bit out. Yeah, but, um, okay. okay, so let's do a couple more questions. we got to be careful, y'all, because history teaches that when the revolutionaries knock off the band, and they become the man, they become the oppressor. Yeah. Remember that now, because generally, from, from what I've discovered, is that if a people are wounded in their soul, and they're fighting from hatred and bitterness to overthrow the oppressor, when they overthrow the oppressor, they become worse. And a typical story in the United States of America, this country fought to get the British a revolution off their backs. While all the while, they had their boot heel on the back of the neck of chattel slaves. You see, be careful what you say you're going to fight for. How do you know when you finally get rid of Assad or Al-Qaeda that you are not going to do the same thing? What guarantee can you give us that your soul is healed enough to rule and rule better than the ones you criticize? There is no way after the blood and sacrifice that the Syrian people have been through that they will tolerate, you know, any radical group, any any individual strongman from taking power and robbing them of the democracy that they've been fighting for all this time. The Maghreb revolution in Syria, as it was in Libya, is not that afterwards the revolutionaries become the rulers, but afterwards the revolutionaries move on to the next revolution. And many people in Libya went to help in Syria. I went on to Syria. People in Syria have said after they defeat Assad, they'll go to Lebanon and they'll pick out Hezbollah, and inshallah they will. And then they'll move on maybe to Iran, and the revolutions will continue. And that's the vision that I have for all of this, where it's at worldwide liberation, starting in this century. I don't want my children to know about authoritarianism except in history books. It's the 21st century, and it has to stop now. And that's why I do this. Thank you, Matthew.